Follow Charlie. He's a good one to sniff out trouble. Stick next to the dog, mister.
I'm a bad man. It's a lie. You're looking good. This whole hey, look organization stinks, and the marshal's to blame. Mr. Marston, how are you? Good, Miss McFarland. How are you? I'm well. Would you mind riding with me to Armadillo? I've got to get some supplies and I could do with the company. Of course. You can take the reins. It wouldn't do for a terrifying bounty hunter such as yourself to be seen driven around by a woman. <laughs> take the driver's seat. Come on. Is there a problem, Mr. Marston? Can we get going? You're looking much better, considering you were almost buzzard food a couple days ago. I have you to thank for that, miss. So do tell me, have you needlessly risked your life since we last spoke? No, miss, I have not. Well, that's a relief. Perhaps there's hope for you yet. I wouldn't bet on it. Oh, there's always hope, Mr. Marston. You can't be a rancher in this kind of country if you don't believe that. An admirable attitude, miss. I suppose so. 
I can't think of any other way to stay sane, to be frank. What about you? Have you ever given up hope altogether? Hope hasn't really entered into it. It's not really something I think about. A peculiar outlook. I can't really say I understand you. I can't always say I do either. Oh, don't be so deliberately enigmatic. I'm not, miss. Yes, you are. You are being deliberately obscure as a substitute for having a personality. I just know there are two theories to arguing with women, and neither one works. I'm not even going to dignify that gibberish with a response. here many times but never made it who's we me and the folks i used to used to work with yeah new austin the last real outlaw country where the old ways still hold true do a man wrong he'll shoot you for it do a man right well he still may shoot you for it but at least you have an idea of what's right and what's wrong here dear oh dear mr marston what dreadful novel did you get that romanticized dribble out of those days are long gone if they were ever here at all According to Paul, those days were just people shooting each other because they lost the cards. We'll be lucky if our ranch survives another five years. Businessmen are the new cowboys. Crack that whip. We don't have all day. Come on, Mr. Marston. I want to get to Armadillo before the stores close. You look like a man who's been through the mill. Uh, thank you. I mean, you've lived some life. I'm 27 years old and I have rarely left Hennigan's stead. Although many years ago we did briefly employ a French governess. Well, I think she was French. She said she was French, but she spoke Russian. That was when Paul thought I would become a lady. A change of pasture doesn't always make for a fatter cat. I know, and I wouldn't change my life for all the money in the world. I'm just saying, sometimes I wish I'd been, well, forever. Been to more places, see more things. If you ask me, it usually takes more strength to stay than to run, Miss McFarland. It is not, but it does okay for us. Most important thing for you right now is getting yourself into Dr. Johnson's office to purchase some medicine. The first one's on me. Thank you, miss. I'll pay you back. I'm sure you shall. The doc's a good fellow. He saved your life, so be polite to him. Meet me in front of the general store when you're done. something for that gout? I hope that helps. That was a hell of a storm last month. Hell of a storm. Any trouble, let me know. If you have any night fevers, come back and see me. Tumbleweed is getting like one big grape I could open a branch there. Finally come to get that bullet out your leg. Much obliged. He told me to take father's college fund and use it to buy land out here with him. Loquacious, you ain't, friend.
Any meds, laudanum, adrenaline, or pills, come see me. for driving me. It was nice to be able to enjoy the view for once, and the little company never hurts now and again. You're more than welcome, miss. Least I can do. Thank you for the medicine. Why don't you have a look around Armadillo? You can always take the stagecoach back to the ranch later. I might just do that. Travel safely, miss. Try not to get yourself shot. I won't be around to save you this time. closer to the border of the town. That's for sure. Welcome to the Armadillo Saloon. Find a drinking establishment in the West. Mother's run, friend. If my daddy had hurried up and died earlier, I might have been able to find a better pursuit. You don't say. Thanks. Hey, cowpuncher, let me see them guns. I'll go for a bourbon. You know that fool with the nippy leg? I heard he used to be a duke in England. I wouldn't like to say. Oh, 
Tumbleweed farmers are always lynching his hope for no good reason. Sounds good to me. Hello there. You old cuss. How you doing? Ellie McGregor's with child. Things aren't what they were. You think you could teach me some lessons, mister? We live in times of great change. And most of them are not the best. we had
I saw something over there, fellas. I got eyes like an owl. Nothing get past me. Move in, boy! I'm taking you in!
Much appreciated. Welcome to my shop. A Mexican name Reyes or something. Hey, partner. All genuine stuff here. Hello. How are you? How are you doing? I've never known a place to live up to its name more than Thieves Landing. I Somerset with his plans. I like some change, but not too much change. Well, I never. Nice doing business with you. Spread the word. Thank you. That's perfect. Nice to do business with you. Look around as much as you want. Mr. Marston, I've been hearing about your plans. Have you, Miss McFarland? Yes, from Lee Johnson. To settle here and build a life for yourself. Uh, I'm afraid those aren't my plans. See, I already have a life. Well, I had one, and I'm trying to reclaim it. Or maybe what you could say is that I had two, and I'm trying to end one of them so the other can survive. You do so love to talk in riddles, Mr. Marston. Do you do that? I wonder, as a substitute for having anything interesting to say? Probably, Miss McFarland. Oh, call me Bonnie, you fool. <sighs> call me Bonnie. Miss McFarland, I'm married. I have a son. I had a daughter, but she died. Years before that, I rode in a gang. We robbed banks. Trains, held people ransom. We killed people we didn't like. Bill Williamson was in that gang. Now, if I don't capture my former brother in arms, great harm will befall my family. Now, I don't suppose any of this is very interesting to you, but I hope it explains why I wasn't so eager to talk about it. No, I do understand. I had no idea. You poor man. Even in this new country, memories don't really fade. My father was an illiterate Scot born on the boat into New York. He never saw his homeland, but to hear him talk about it, you'd imagine he only ever ate haggis and wore a kilt. And he hated the English for what they had done to his great-grandparents that he'd never met. People don't forget. Nothing gets forgiven. That's true, especially when it comes to money. And you know, even now, after all his labors, my father's debts are still terrible. I worry every day about us losing the ranch. It would kill him. My father died when I was eight years old. His eyes were, well, let's just say he was blinded in a bar fight south of Chicago. 
My mother died during childbirth. She was a prostitute, and he was her... Well, I don't, I don't know what he was. So I was sent off to an orphanage and ran away and fell in with a gang. My word. What a difficult life you've lived. Uh, the leader of the gang taught me how to read, taught me how to see all that was good in the world. He was a great man, in a way. But you killed people. Sure. And I've suffered for it. And that's the life I left, or tried to leave. Ah, uh, said too much, Bonnie. I'm an uneducated killer, sent here to do all I can do well. Kill a man in cold blood so that another man may do his part to cut crime in an area, and a rich man can be elected governor on the back of these promises. Civilization is a truly beautiful thing, Mr. Marston. <laughs> Listen, can you help me? Well, I can try. What do you need, money? No, nothing so complicated. I need an extra hand to take out the herd to pasture. <laughs> sure. Point me in the right direction. all that back there. It must have been hard for you. I hope you understand now why I've been playing my cards somewhat close to my chest. I didn't know you had a wife and child. Then again, I don't think I ever asked. They're, they're lucky to have a man like you. Good to see you, Miss McFarland. Showing off now. Keep oh, going, Mr. Now Boston. we need to move this entire herd out to the far pasture for grazing. Marston. Either that, or you were a cow in a past life. Thank you, Miss McFarland. I'll see you later. I have work to do back at the ranch.
yourself. Saved us doing our job, and we thank you for it. Can't let the criminals win now, can we? If it ain't me, it's someone else.
Well, howdy. Excuse me, friend. Mind if I rest up at your camp a spell? Well, it'd be my pleasure. Man needs a break from this desiccated land. Thank you, mister. Say, what's that stick you got there? Oh. Y'all ain't never seen a dowsing rod before, mister? Never seen a man summon the water up from the bare earth? Uh, mister, uh... Marston. Ah. No, can't say I have. Hmm. It's water you're looking for. What's wrong with that lake over there? Oh, there ain't nothing wrong with Lake Don Julio. Nothing wrong with it, but we lack the fancy irrigation equipment you folks have back east. So, man needs a wellspring on his proper tide around here. Makes sense. Yeah. Why, you know, just last week, I was over at Old Pleasant's house. Now, I think I may have found something, but old coot that owns the place threatened to call the law down on me. So People running around strange men with sticks. They sure do. Damn fools. Bet you he don't even know how much water's running underneath his proper tie. You want me to tell him? <laughs> you know what? You ain't that stupid, mister. And I can tell. I'll tell you what. Why don't you go get the old man to sell us his proper top for a small pittance? Then I can find the source of the water, build us a proper wellspring. Maybe I will. Well, all right then. <laughs> Need help, mister. Darn fools. My fault, officer.
make this quick. Pleasure, ma'am. Hey. Tough one, ain't you? This is a messy one. Oh, Lord, this is nasty. It's over with.
Howdy, friend. I didn't know anyone lived out here. Whoa! Now you can't rob the place now, can you? Now get! Friendly old bastard, ain't you? I don't need me no friends, friend. We all need friends, old timer. We die alone, but we live among men. You know, I was interested in moving out this way with my family. Would you be willing to sell me a parcel of land? We wouldn't even have to speak or nothing. Land's too dry for farming. Bandits run all the cattle off. Why you want this land? I guess I just like the scenery. Well, I don't know. Maybe for $200 I could give you the deed to this land, find myself a place up in Blackwater. Although I never could stand the people down there. No, sir. Two hundred, partner. Take it or leave it. Why don't you come back when you got the money? Make up your mind. I ain't got all day. And I can tell you, with no uncertainty, that miracle cures are no laughing matter. I bid you good day, sir. Uh, <laughs> oh, Mr. Marston, good to see you. How have you been keeping? I'm well, Mr. Uh, Mr. West Dickens. Nigel West Dickens of East Cheap, London, New Waverly, New York, and Armadillo, New Austin. At your service. At my service. At everyone's service, at the service of science, of knowledge, of life. Uh, <laughs> how are your wounds? Hmm? Oh, oh, uh, much, much better. But then they would be. Mm -hmm. Would be. I know a cure for all ailments, Mr. Marston. Ah, I'm sure you do. And I'm sure for just $2 an ounce, I could live forever. Oh, but for you, sir. I do a bulk discount rate of 195 an ounce. <laughs> as long as you buy 100 ounces or more, that's a lot of immortality. Oh, uh, give it up, old man. That's Mr. West Dickens to you, boy. Give it up, old man. <laughs> uh, listen, Marston, I'm broke. But this stuff is good. It works. I need a healthy young man like you. <laughs> Come along. Let's ride over to my newest customer at Ridgewood, and I'll explain while we go. Okay. <laughs> Head for Ridgewood Farm, John, and hurry. There are people there in dire need of my tonic. 
I heard about you, Mr. West Dickens. And I about you, John Marston. Good week in the week, gullible out of their hard-earned money. For the love of God, try to stay on the road! My dear boy, it is you who is gullible, if I may be so bold, for eating such ill-informed scuttlebutt. Stay on the road! They're going to destroy the merchandise! You're as full of wind as a horse with the collar. If my tonic is such a sham, how do you explain the fine battle in which you find me? Last time you saw me, I was knocking at death's door. You should thank the doctor for that. I reckon you were acting it up worse than it was. Act I can, John. A more convincing old fellow there has never been. Get back on the road! You'll have nothing left by the time we get to Ridgewood! And so shall you be there, Yasuo, for Cassio me. For the love of God, try to stay on the road! I don't like the sound of it. Stay on the road! We're going to destroy the merchandise! Showmanship, John! The flourish! The bow! We get to Ridgewood. We are operating in a competitive marketplace. Our product must stand out. And how does this involve me? We're going to use your God-given talents to our advantage. I'm really starting to regret I'll this. I'll drop you off at the outskirts of Ridgewood. That way, it won't look like we came together. But once I'm set up, I'm not allowed to get into the crowd that is sure to be my time. After tolling the virtues, I will have you perform a few feats of wonder to amaze and impress the pain public. Stay on the road! You're going to destroy the merchandise! Such as? Oh, nothing out of the ordinary for a man in your line of work, I assure you. Best you alight here, dear boy, so no one sees us arriving together. See you shortly, and remember, showmanship! Lighter back there, friends, hard-working souls of uh, Chola Springs, uh, gather round, gather round. Do you suffer from rheumatism, lumbago, acute chronic sciatic, uh, uh, neurologic or inflammatory pain? Well, I represent the only company 
that makes the genuine article that cures headaches, neuralgia, uh, earache, toothaches, backache, swelling, sprains, sore chests, swelling of the throats, contracted cords and muscles, anxieties and ravaged nerves, stiff joints, wrenches, dislocations, cuts and bruises, and it adds vitality and vigor to the healthy man. <laughs> Can you prove it, old man? Oh, I'm sure there's some customer here who could prove the qualities of it by... Take a drink right now. You, sir, come up here. Step right up. That's the spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, pay close attention. This poor, wretched volunteer, entirely unknown to me, will demonstrate the effects of Dr. West Dickens' own patent tonic. Be you a cowpoke or athlete, this miraculous elixir developed with the wisdom of the East keeps the muscles supple and relaxes the cords. It loosens the joints and gives a feeling of youth and vigor to the whole system. Not possible, I hear you say. Well, doubt no longer. Faith can move mountains, but I ask not for faith. I am a man of science, and today, science will be vindicated. Your eyesight is greatly improved, is that not so, friend? If you say so. That's right, it is. You heard him. What a good sport you are, sir. Now, gaze over yonder at that porch. If you squint, you may just be able to make out the skull that's hanging there. Go ahead, friend. Shoot that skull and demonstrate the miraculous eyesight you now possess. Remarkable! The eyesight of an eagle, granted by imbibing Dr. Westicott's own patent tonic. If anybody can make that shot, this man is a fraud. If your eyes so damn sharp, why don't you try to shoot my hat out of the air? My friends, our test case has been challenged to shoot a gentleman's hat out of the sky above our heads. You can fool these people, but you ain't fooling me. Right. Let's just see how sharp you is with a moving target. Get ready. He's about to throw it. You ready to get embarrassed again? Have you ever seen such an eye? Behold the power of the elixir plucked out of the sky. Hey! Hey! What? You think you can put a hole in a man's hat and just walk away, do you? They hey, don't work like that around here. Come on! Are you a man or not? A challenge of battle has been offered to our volunteer. Look at him! The tonic is coursing through his veins! You're making it. This is about to get ugly! Just look at the strength the tonic is affording him! You've got so I don't fight at him. Tell me where you want him. Come on. Let the battle commence. Time somebody taught you a lesson. Say good night, friend. <laughs> I thought they brought me a real man. I'm putting you down. Oh. Can you believe your eyes? Get it down. Come on, show me something. What a scrap, friend.
There it is! Skeptics and dissenters, irrefutable proof! Do not let this opportunity pass you by! Look, he's over there! Go get this him! This ends now! Watch out! He's got a gun! Who the hell do you think you are? You ain't leaving here alive! Shot, dear boy! The kind of deadly accuracy that can only be afforded by the West Dickens elixir! Come! I have plenty for all! Yeah, no harm in trying one bottle, I suppose. Well, I think that went kind of well, don't you? I'm just glad that my normal job involves either chasing after cattle or murderers. Not the likes of you, mister. Don't be like that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to say my goodbyes and head on back to the real world. Uh, 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 wait, sir. I, I've been thinking about your predicament, and uh, I think I may have an idea. I've been thinking I could be your cunning Odysseus. Beware of the Greeks carrying gifts, sir. Mm -hmm. Williamson had better beware. We will make them into Trojans. I don't rightly get you. I want you to go and see my old friend, Seth. Uh, he can come across as a little curious, but I'm sure you two will get on. Uh, he's uh, most often found at Coote's Chapel. He's very devout. Why see him? Because between him and me, we can get those gates to open for you, and you can walk right in, just like in Homer's great Trojan yarn! Yeah. Oh! 
Ah! Since you're here, you want to make yourself useful? Not particularly. Listen, son, I know you got a mission. But right now, I need another gun. Why? What's happening? We've had this problem for months with this group of bandits. who are getting drunk and murdering settlers. Last night, they went to a big place up near Ridgewood. They burnt the place down, killed the men, burning most of them alive, and raped the women. The women folk then got their throats slit. One of them survived and walked in here this morning. Anyway... We got a posse gathering up near Ridgewood. Will you ride with us? All right. Thank you, John Marston. It's gonna be a bloody job. Huh. I don't think I know any other kind, sir. Hey, wait up! found a remedy to all ailments, and he was in pretty bad shape. His tonic has helped a great many people. It's a medical breakthrough from the East. The result of years of research. 
If only it could cure him of his diarrhea of the mouth. I wouldn't be so dismissive of science if I was you. Times are changing fast. He's no more a scientist than I am a priest. But people can spend their hard-earned money however they please. Look, vultures. Might just be a dead critter. Parson, take a look. Eli, you too. This don't look too good. Somebody was so busy killing people, they went and dropped their gun. smoke. Those scumbags must still be around. Come on! Come on, let's ride! They kinda got too far. Sons of bitches! Did you want to run a gang of outlaws? Marston? Yeah, but not like that. It wasn't our way. At least it wasn't my way. Killing and thieving's never right, boy. No matter how you dress it up. Unless it's ordered by a court of law, you mean. This is too quiet. I got a bad feeling about this. Let's search the area! Nobody's in the shed!
No one here! Holy sweet mother of mercy. Please, please don't shoot me. Some bandits came by and took us hostage. They're holed up in the farmhouse. Some of my family is being kept hostage inside. <laughs> All right, boys, we need to get into that house right now. I need to get out of here. Pretty little thing. I'm gonna enjoy as soon as you can make a run for the shed. Keep your head down. Thank you. I was convinced I was dead. Like that. 
just me and you, partner! There'll be a deputy waiting for you. Just walk away! I'm gonna rip you up. I don't believe it! in All right. Head for the shed in the back as soon as it looks clear. Thank you. They said they were gonna kill us all. Looks all clear, fellas. Let's check up on the farmer.
Let's just say he's the currency in a complicated transaction. What the hell you talking about? Some people I have the displeasure of knowing want him dead. Eyes up! You see that? You just walk away now, John. I didn't kill you before, but I sure as shit will now! Get yourself down here, Bill. You know you ain't man enough to stop me. <laughs> you know I don't want to kill you, but I will. You always did have a high opinion of yourself, John. <laughs> Dutch always said you were an arrogant son of a bitch. I guess he was about right. Get him, boys! Everybody, take cover! In that shed! Buddy. Thanks for your help, John. Norman here is gonna help us get to Bill. <coughs> Ain't you, Norman? Thank you, Mr. Dick. Mighty kind. <laughs> Fuck you! <coughs> Hog time. Let's get him to jail. This ain't nice, I know.
Thank you. 